When we humans began to process metal ores to get metals, we also began to understand some types of reactions. When a metal reacted with the oxygen in the air, it was said that the metal was oxidized. In the reaction, oxygen was consumed. Therefore, it was said that the oxygen was reduced. This was the original definition of oxidation and reduction. But we will now look at ordinary table salt and how to make it to see how to define oxidation and reduction today. To do this, I'll first run a small simulation. This is a free app called Chemist that I have downloaded to my iPad. In the simulation, I can first choose what kind of materials to use, so I produce a small flask here. This flask I fill with chlorine gas by choosing from the gases from this shelf. Now, I want to add sodium and make it react with the chlorine gas, so I choose sodium from the shelf and pour a small amount into the flask. And boom, the sodium reacts with the chlorine gas. In reality, the reaction is much more violent than shown in the simulation. It shines very bright and gets very hot. It releases a lot of energy. What is formed in the reaction is solid sodium chloride, or table salt, as it's called in plain English. Now that you've seen this simulation, it's time to return to the notes. And we write here that 2Na plus Cl2 gives 2NaCl. Now, let's deconstruct this reaction formula so you understand exactly what's happening and why the reaction formula looks like this. So, let's dive straight into the concept of oxidation and we write right here what oxidation is. Oxidation means that electrons are given off. When sodium reacts with chlorine, it is the sodium atom that is being oxidized and we are going to look at exactly what that means. To the left, we draw a model of the sodium atom. It has 11 protons in its nucleus and thus 11 electrons to be distributed in the different shells. Two in the K shell, eight in the L shell and one single tiny electron in the M shell. Go ahead and draw it, you too. To remove this electron, we need to add some energy. It's just like if you lift a rock from the ground, you add energy, potential energy to the rock. What happens then is that we get something that looks like this. There are still 11 protons in the nucleus, but since the outermost electron has been lifted away, there is no longer any M shell, and in total there are only 10 electrons left around the nucleus. And do you see that now there are 8 electrons in the outermost shell here? This configuration is very stable and is called the noble gas structure. But I'll return to noble gases in a later video. And also, we get a free electron here on the right as well. Here below, we write that we start with a sodium atom and then we add energy to it. In fact, we add so much energy that the valence electron is completely removed from the atom. Then we get a so-called sodium ion, which we write Na+. That's because it still has 11 positively charged protons, but only 10 negatively charged electrons. Therefore, it gets a total charge of 1 plus. A reduction is the opposite of an oxidation and means that electrons are taken up. In the reaction between sodium and chlorine, it's the chlorine atom that is reduced. We will now study closely what happens to it. Here I draw a chlorine atom and I want you to do that too. With 17 protons in the nucleus and then 2 electrons in the K-shell, 8 electrons in the L-shell and 7 electrons in the M-shell. A total of 17 electrons, of course. What happens to the chlorine atom when it is reduced? That is, it takes up an electron. Let's draw it. 17 protons are still in the nucleus, 2 electrons are in the K-shell, 8 in the L-shell, but now there are 8 electrons in the M-shell. And as I just said recently, 8 valence electrons, that is really stable, so the chlorine atom is quite satisfied this way. But what happened to the chlorine atom then? Well, it has picked up an electron, so we write that down here. Then a chloride ion is formed, and at the same time a lot of energy is released. It's just like you let go of that rock I talked about that you lifted earlier. 
Then the rock's potential energy is converted to kinetic energy and finally to heat energy, which is released when the rock hits the ground. The amount of energy released when the chlorine atom absorbs an electron is much greater than the energy needed to remove an electron from the sodium atom. That is why throughout the reaction so much energy is released. But do you see here also that the chloride ion is negatively charged? That's because it still has 17 protons in the nucleus, but since it has picked up a negatively charged electron, it now has 18 electrons and a negative charged extra. Therefore, the chloride ion becomes negatively charged, which we write here Cl-. Let's summarize that by writing down some redox reactions between sodium and chlorine gas. First with a word formula, namely that sodium plus chlorine gas becomes sodium chloride, and then it releases a lot of energy as well. Now let's write this with electron formulas too. When you write electron formulas or Lewis structures, you usually draw only the valence electrons, but for the sodium atom here, I draw both the single valence electron and the electrons in the shell inside of it. You'll shortly see what's the point with this. We have the chlorine atom here and it has seven valence electrons. So I draw them right here. What happens in this reaction between sodium and chlorine is that the sodium atom is oxidized. That is, it releases its only valence electron. Instead, the electron is taken up by the chlorine atom, which means it is reduced. We then get a sodium ion, which we write like this. It now has eight electrons in its outermost shell, which is extra stable. Since it has lost a negative charge, it has the charge of plus one, which we write with a small plus like this. Now, what about the chlorine atom? Well, it has picked up an electron here, so then it also has eight electrons in its outermost shell. Since it has received an extra negative charge, the chloride ion, as it's now called, becomes negatively charged. We write that with a minus sign up here. Let's write this with electron configurations as well, just to be on the safe side. The sodium atom has 11 protons and thus two electrons in the K shell, eight in the L shell and one in the M shell. It reacts with a chlorine atom that has 17 protons in the nucleus and therefore two electrons in the K shell eight electrons in the L shell and seven electrons in the M shell. In the reaction, a sodium ion is formed still with 11 protons in the nucleus, but now a total of 10 electrons, two in the K shell and eight in the L shell. Therefore, the sodium ion gets a net charge of plus one. A chloride ion is also formed still with 17 protons in the nucleus, but now with a total of 18 electrons distributed like this on the K, L and M shells. Since it has an extra electron and thus an extra negative charge, the chloride ion's net charge becomes minus one. We now conclude with a little formula writing of redox reactions. A redox reaction, that's what you get when you combine both an oxidation and a reduction into a single lovely reaction. Let's start by writing the oxidation here. It was sodium that was oxidized, which means that the sodium atom was converted to a sodium ion and a free electron. The reduction, it was like this, that chlorine was reduced. But now it is like this, that in chlorine gas, the atoms always come two by two. We write it this way with an index two to the right. This means that there are two chlorine atoms bound to one another. And since there are two chlorine atoms, two electrons are also needed for both chlorine atoms to be reduced to two chloride ions. The chloride ions now, they then do not sit together two by two, which we show by writing the two to the left of Cl- instead. If we now merge these two formulas into a single redox reaction, then we encounter a problem. Each sodium atom only gives off a single electron. We need two sodium atoms to get two electrons, so we need to multiply the entire oxidation formula by two, like this. As we now add the two formulas together, we see 
that we have two electrons both on the right and on the left of the reaction arrow. Since the electrons given off in the oxidation are used directly in the reduction, we can remove them in the total reaction, like this. Now we just put it all together and add the oxidation and the reduction reactions. We get a redox reaction, which we can write like this. 2Na plus Cl2 becomes 2Na plus plus 2Cl minus. If we want, we can combine the positively charged sodium ions and the negatively charged chloride ions to uncharged sodium chloride, NaCl. And that's what I want to, so I just write that two sodium chloride units are formed, like this. And now you've learned the fundamentals of how oxidations and reductions work. Because this is good to know as we dive deeper into the periodic table and see what are the properties of the different elements.